By the year 2063, human activity has caused a massive rise in sea level, most of the planet has been flooded, and survival is a constant fight for land and resources. The continents remained, but they were always at war. The movie begins in an abandoned military base in the middle of nowhere out in the open sea by the name of Sentinel. The team is battling against a heavy rainstorm while they attempt to fish. Cassidy and Sullivan are out on the docks, happy about the amount they managed to catch. While they're pulling in their last batch, the captain of the crew, Hendrix, informs them that a level nine wave is headed their way and urges them to secure all equipment before getting themselves inside. While Cassidy goes up to the higher levels, Sullivan attempts to secure their last net. After a long struggle, Sullivan gives Cassidy the thumbs up to pull their catch, which they later find out was swept up by the heavy wave. The following morning, Sullivan wakes up early to make breakfast for the group while Hendrix shakes on the nuclear weapon by wearing a protective suit. Baines, the last team member, works on getting the generator running and fixes the leak that was caused by the previous night's storm. A few minutes later, the group gathers to discuss how to move forward as their supplies have been spread thin. When Sullivan serves them their breakfast, Baines begins to complain about Sullivan losing their catch, preventing them from having fresh food for another month. Trying to keep the peace, the captain asks Baines to give him a damage report on the Sentinel, which he sarcastically does. When Hendrix tells him he has every confidence that he will fix it, Baines angrily tells them that the platform is leaning at an angle that could cause the whole structure to collapse. Baines warns the group that they need to leave the station as soon as possible, but Hendrix refuses to contact the base to ask for a relief team, even though their two-year Baines had been fulfilled three months ago. Later, while standing on the highest platform, Sullivan and Hendrix notice a boat slowly making its way toward them. Entering a state of alert, the captain sounds the alarm, informing the group to be ready. Cassidy begins to send a radio signal to the boat, asking for identification while the men prepare the launchers. When they don't get any response, Hendrix orders Sullivan to get the boat and go see who is on the boat. While Sullivan grabs the small motorboat and heads over, Hendrix gives the order to Baines not to hesitate to shoot down the ship when he gives the order, because if it's an enemy vessel, Sullivan will be as good as dead anyway. When Sullivan makes it to the ship, he fears incoming voices from his radio would put him at risk and shuts it off. After looking around the docks and inside the cabin, he finds that the place is completely abandoned, completely forgetting that his radio is off. Meanwhile, Hendrix assumes the worst and is getting ready to fire on the ship by activating the nuclear missile. After finding a large stash of food and indulging in a candy bar, Sullivan remembers that his radio is off and attempts to turn it on, only to be shocked to hear that Hendrix was about to launch a missile. Panicking, Sullivan informs them that he is okay and that the boat is empty before towing it back to the station. After his close call with death, Sullivan goes to find Cassidy and the two spend an intimate time together hiding in one of the rooms. The following day, the group takes iodine baths to protect them from the constant radiation. Although the team wants to contact the base about the boat, Hendrix is adamant about acquiring more information before doing so. Later, when Sullivan and Cassidy are alone in their sleeping quarters, he asks her if she ever thought about the world before it was flooded by the oceans. Shrugging, she tells him that humans ruined it a long time ago and that she doesn't lose sleep over something that happened. When she's about to leave the room, Sullivan insinuates that they should start seeing each other when they return home, but Cassidy immediately stops him, telling him that they didn't even know when they'd make it home. Looking at her intently, Sullivan explains that he had secretly sent a message and that they would find out the following day. The next morning, Sullivan and Cassidy are waiting for a response from the base when Baines enters the radio room. Seeing their awkward looks, he realizes that Sullivan had sent a message despite the captain's strict orders and informs Hendrix when he comes into the room. While he is staring at them upset, the daily SOS messages come through like usual and to their surprise, it is followed up by Sullivan's message, but no response. Thinking that there was a faulty receiver at the base, Cassidy went up to the roof to check the station systems. That night, while Sullivan is transporting water to the kitchen, Baines invites him for a drink, even though they don't like each other. After getting sufficiently buzzed, Baines phrases his thought that they were sent here to keep people in check, and that he didn't think their enemy would cross half the world to come and attack them. Baines explains that his wife hypothesized that they probably whipped out their enemy years ago, or the rising sea levels did it for them. Looking at him intently, Baines tells him that he might be able to make the boat work to get them away from there. The next day, Sullivan and Baines work on the boat all morning and manage to get it running. Happy with their success, they leave the engine room to find Hendrix waiting for them. Looking at them sternly, he orders them to take the boat apart so they can use the parts to fix the station. Upset at the order, Sullivan explains that they had 14 days to beat the storm and go home, 
or they would lose the boat for good, voting that they head out. Threatening them with his gun, Hendrix gives them new orders, telling them that no one is going to abandon the station. After Hendrix leaves, Cassidy goes to speak with him, while Baines presents the idea of incapacitating the captain to Sullivan. As Hendrix tries to deactivate the ship's system, Cassidy approaches him, and says her condolences about the team he had lost years ago, telling him not to add two more to the list. Heeding her words, Hendrix goes to speak to the two men and asks them to pour him a drink as well after seeing the bottle in Baines's hands. He tells the team that he agrees to their idea of leaving, but explains that they cannot completely abandon their post, explaining that Cassidy had volunteered to stay with him while the rest go home. Later, Sullivan goes to speak to Cassidy, about her abrupt decision and tells her he wouldn't leave without her. Angry, she tells him that she didn't feel the same way he felt about her, explaining that she was only sleeping with him because she had needs and nothing more. Upset by her dismissal, Sullivan leaves her cabin. The following morning, the team is woken up by an alarm after the station's radar picks up another boat headed their way. As Sullivan and Baines take their positions by the launcher, Cassidy attempts to make communication with the boat. Unwilling to wait to find out who it is, Hendrix orders for them to fire, but the first shot misses the boat. Suddenly, Sullivan realizes that the boat they were being ordered to fire on was the same one they were going to leave in. When Sullivan asks Baines to stop, Hendrix pulls out a gun against them in an attempt to force them into executing his order. When he refuses, Hendrix shoots Baines in the ear as a warning, telling him that it is his last chance. In an attempt to save his life, Sullivan makes the shot and manages to hit the boat. During the loud explosion, Cassidy sneaks up behind the captain and hits him over the head. The rest of the group drags the captain's passed out body and traps him in a holding chamber. Baines is devastated as his hopes to see his family again have been crushed and begins to drink heavily. The three remaining teammates discuss Hendrix's fate and Baines is adamant about not letting the man out even for his iodine baths, then decides he quit the job. When they're left alone, Cassidy apologizes to Sullivan about the things she said, telling him that she was only trying to get him to get on the boat. Later, Sullivan takes Hendrix some food and asks him why he had done what he did. Looking up at him from where he was sitting, Hendrix explains that the boat had arrived three months ago, but he had recreated the route. The boat had gone 10 miles east and then changed course away from the station, then stopped the engines five miles north, which made it look like it was drifting. Looking at him intently, Hendrix tells Sullivan that they need to ask two questions. Why weren't they able to see it? And why did the boat change course if all they had to do was follow the beacon? Believing they couldn't trust him, Sullivan heads out while Hendrix tells him that he needs to get him out. After he leaves the pantry where they're keeping Hendrix, Sullivan is sitting alone when Cassidy approaches him and shows him a picture of her family who were killed in an enemy raid. The two share a moment as they talk about their past and end up in bed together. When Sullivan wakes up, he finds his bed empty as Cassidy has gone to the control room for her shift. Having been up for hours, Cassidy was exhausted and taking a nap when she was startled away by Baines. Suddenly, Baines attacks her, choking her and pushing her on the table, but she manages to elbow his nose and escape. On her way down the stairs, she runs into Sullivan and tells him what happened. Although Sullivan thinks Baines is just drunk, the two are shocked to see that Baines has activated the nuclear weapon. Rushing toward the control center, they talk their friend down into to shutting the weapon off. A few days after the incident, Baines seems to have calmed down and has returned to his usual tasks, helping Cassidy and Sullivan. The two then go to check on Hendrix, only to find out that he had jumped into the water and escaped. A few days later, Cassidy and Sullivan realize the storm was two days earlier than usual and begin their preparation. Cassidy and Baines sail out using their boat to salvage from the garbage pile floating toward them, while Sullivan attempts to pull up the net to see if there have been any catches and is shocked to find Hendrix's dead body with a gunshot wound to the head. Although he tries to pull it up, the weight is too heavy and it sinks back down. Feeling strange about the whole thing, he remembers what Hendrix had told him days ago and goes to check the radio transcriptions they had received. He then rummages through Cassidy's locker to find something, but is unable to see anything suspicious. Meanwhile, Cassidy, holding the beacon to the station, draws the small boat away and meets the crew's relief team massacring them all. When she returns to the Sentinel, she tells Sullivan that Baines has killed himself. The two share a sorrowful moment and end up sleeping together. When she wakes up in the morning, she finds herself alone in bed and contacts Sullivan through the radio. When he finally answers, he tells her that he knows Baines didn't kill himself and that he has also figured out that she was the one who killed their original relief crew, implying that he knew why she was there. When she asks him what he meant by that, Sullivan explains that he can't let her have the nuclear weapon. Realizing what he is about to do, she runs up to the control center and finds Sullivan activating the weapon to destroy it. When she tries to come close to him, 
He pulls out the gun that she had used to kill so many of his people. With tears in her eyes, Cassidy explains that she hated lying to him, but that she needed the weapon or her people would perish. The gun trained on her, he told her no one should have the weapon and released the button, which would let it detonate. As the two open their eyes, they realize the bomb hadn't gone off and writing had come on the small screen next to the bomb, quoting a conversation Sullivan had with Baines. Later, the two sit in front of each other in the common area as Cassidy puts the gift of a metal globe he had given her. Looking at her intently, he asks her what it is. The movie ends with the camera zooming away from the Sentinel, and with that, the movie ends. We hope you enjoyed our video. Watch the next recaps on the screen, and don't forget to subscribe for more amazing recaps. See you in the next one.